Dr. House, I don't think we've met. Dr. Jamie Conway, I've heard your name. Most people have. It's also a noun. Hello there, Maud Garrett here, and you are watching another episode of RT Essentials. This one goes out to all of you TV drama devotees and primetime partakers with a soft spot for the everyday heroes. Let's face it, what greater heroes are there than those working in the medical field? Nurses, doctors, surgeons, these are the real life warriors fighting on the front lines, clocking endless hours and courageously carrying us through physical and emotional hardships, all in the name of healing. Plus, they have to learn really, really long, complicated words just because it has to do with our bodies. <laughs> we do take comfort in knowing that we're in good hands. We entrust these professionals with the lives of those we hold dearest. It doesn't take a neurosurgeon to figure out why audiences would tune in week after week for a show that seeks to capture the triumphs and troubles of such a world and its key players. The stakes are high. The romance is fierce. But wouldn't it be if you were doing 20-hour shifts every day? The loss is gut-wrenching and the content is educational and pragmatic. Makes for some top shelf entertainment. It's no wonder that hospital based dramas are some of the longest running scripted series to ever hit the small screen. But what else makes this subgenre so appealing? Let's find out. These are the greatest TV medical dramas of all time. ER. Oh, this is awkward for me. I don't know what else to do. Could you talk to her for me? Uh, I'm not sure what. <laughs> And up first is ER, created by the father of the techno thriller, Michael Crichton. If you're not familiar with Crichton, his books have sold over 200 million copies and include Jurassic Park and The Lost World. But what is perhaps even more impressive is that before turning to writing, Crichton received an MD from Harvard Medical School. Pfft, what were you doing with your life, right? We're not doing that. That's for sure, and thanks for the reminder. It was Crichton's experience as a medical student that inspired the original screenplay for ER, and it's clear that his knowledge in the field attributed to the effectiveness of the show. With Spielberg's Amblin Television producing, NBC ordered the first six episodes, and the series premiered on September 19th of 1994. It was nothing short of an instant classic. Okay, forget all that. Call Susan Lewis, call the seventh and eighth floor, tell them we need anybody they can spare. Why don't you do that now? Okay. Take him to trauma room two. What's your name, sir? Can you tell me your name? ER ran for an impressive 15 seasons, the second longest running American medical drama, and it launched the careers of several stars, including Juliana Margulies and George Clooney. You know, the guy from the tequila brand. Sometimes he does an espresso. It is also one of the most nominated shows in history, with 375 industry award nods. 116 of those were wins, and 23 of those wins being primetime Emmys. Critics praised the show's direction, writing, editing, and outstanding performances from an ever-evolving cast of heavy hitters. Time magazine called it the most realistic fictional treatment of the medical profession TV has ever presented. And the Writers Guild of America ranked ER number 27 on its list of the 101 best written TV series of all time. ER set the tone for what a doctor-based drama could be, choosing to take its science and medicine seriously and educating while entertaining. Studies conducted in the early 2000s showed that viewers' knowledge of certain diseases increased after watching episodes of ER, and that the show even affected their healthcare choices. Pair that level of influence with all those awards and over $3 billion in TV revenue, and you've got a legacy fit for a Clooney. Grey's Anatomy. Dr. Shepard. Here's the films. Pressure's 90 over 60. But she's got a 30% new. No obvious effusion. She needs a chest tube. 36 tube betadine and six and a half gloves. Cut up the floor back. Not to rain on the ER parade, but this next series takes the cake as the longest running medical drama in history. Grey's Anatomy premiered on March 27, 2005, and it is still going strong. That's 18 seasons and 387 episodes. Talk about a marathon. The show was created by legendary producer Shonda Rhimes, who was recently listed on the Time 100 list as one of the most influential people in the world for the second time, rightfully so. Just her work on Grey's Anatomy is worthy of eternal praise. And then she did Bridgerton, thank you. The show follows Dr. Meredith Grey, portrayed by Ellen Pompeo, and is set at Grey Sloan Memorial Hospital in Seattle. 
though it's a fictitious hospital and it's actually not really Seattle. The show is primarily filmed in Los Angeles. Gotta love Hollywood. I picked this one and it wasn't to watch Meredith Grey on a TV screen. Oh, you know what? Oh, you're right. Yeah, you shouldn't have to work like that, so let's fix it. Work somewhere else. What? You're fired, Dr. Kadri. Aside from making Pompeo a household name and one of the highest paid TV actresses, the show also launched the careers of Golden Globe winner Sandra Oh, aka Christina Yang, and Emmy nominated Patrick Dempsey, aka McDreamy. While we're on the subject of awards, it seems appropriate to point out that Grey's Anatomy has received 25 primetime Emmy nominations and 10 Golden Globe nominations. Additionally, the show has garnered a mostly positive critical response for the entirety of its run, which is impressive considering how difficult it is to maintain quality for even a couple of seasons, let alone 18. Many praised the casting choices and character development, with the Huffington Post deeming the Meredith slash Yang relationship the most true friendship on network television. The New York Times has called Grey's Anatomy television's hottest show, and Entertainment Weekly has written that it's a good soap, good romantic comedy, good medical drama, and a good interpersonal show about unexpected workplace family. On that, we most certainly agree. MASH. Hey, Radar, you know, without your glasses, you could almost pass for offensive. Hey, why don't you leave the little fellow alone? It's okay. I can take a joke. Next up is the granddaddy of them all, MASH, or Mobile Army Surgical Hospital. That's the first time I knew what that meant. Everyone knows that iconic intro, with the catchy theme song playing over shots of helicopters gliding through the mountains. But not everyone knows that MASH was a spin-off adapted from a feature film, and that feature film was based on a 1968 novel entitled MASH, a novel about three army doctors. The show was developed by Larry Gelbert and featured an ensemble cast that included Alan Alder, Wayne Rogers, Loretta Swit, and McLean Stevenson. Originally airing on CBS September 17, 1972, MASH ran for a triumphant 11 seasons and 256 episodes. One possible explanation for why the show was such a smash, see what I did there, was because of its ability to blend comedy and drama, tackling serious issues in an accessible and light-hearted manner. Take five, Pops! I don't think he can hear us! I think you're right. Easily fixed. Put down that horn, we have your head surrounded. Gentlemen, I've just finished an arduous session of work and now it is time to play. Then why don't you play something a little less harmful, like a bazooka? Though the show was set in the Korean War, it was airing in the midst of the Vietnam War, and many felt that it was a commentary on the US military engagement overseas. MASH provided a humorous anecdote to the chaos of life during wartime, and though much of the nation was politically divided, there seemed to be a unanimous praise for this series. The ratings speak for themselves. MASH's final episode aired in 1983 and was the most watched television broadcast in American history, with over 125 million viewers. And it held that record up until 2010, finally surrendering the title to Super Bowl 44. Rolling Stone ranked MASH the 16th greatest TV show ever, and the Writers Guild of America ranked it the fifth best written TV series ever. Clearly, MASH left an incredible mark in television history, forever influencing war-based series and paving the way for the beloved medical drama comedy. Or as I like to call it, a madromedy. Madromedy, I am coining that one. Watch me. <laughs> Scrubs. I'd love to set you up with my grandniece. Oh, thank you. I'm not big on blind dates. Then I know I haven't hit it in a while, but there's good reason for that. Two good reasons, his face and his personality. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will hurt forever. This next madramedy was created by Bill Lawrence, the man behind numerous successful series, including the current mega-hit Ted Lasso, of which we highly recommend the first season. Scrubs originally aired on NBC October 2nd, 2001, where it stayed for seven seasons before switching over to ABC for its final two seasons. That's nine seasons and 182 episodes of fast-paced, hospital-based amusement. The show starred Zach Braff, Donald Faison, Sarah Chalk, John C. McGinley, Judy Reyes, Carrie Bichet, and Eliza Coop, and was infamous for having major film stars make guest appearances. Colin Farrell, Ryan Reynolds, Michael J. Fox, Heather Graham, Brendan Fraser, and Tara Reid, just to name a few. Well, instead of dwelling on the negative, let's look at the positive signs, okay? Your uh, pericarditis is resolving, your renal function is good. <laughs> so 
Suicidal scavenger bird's also an excellent sign, right, Doctor? It's a great sign. Braff played protagonist Dr. John Michael Dorian, aka JD, who was also the first narrator for the first eight seasons until Bichet's character Lucy Bennett took over in season nine. One interesting element of the show was that everything was meant to be viewed from JD's perspective, with the voiceover being his internal thoughts and his frequent fantasies playing out in real time. This inventive comedic device was instrumental to the show's style and success, and set it apart from other series at the time. Scrubs was critically acclaimed, with publications like Entertainment Weekly calling it a likeable, daffy, buoyant series that would be a big annoying mess if it weren't done just right. Luckily, it was done just right. TV Insider listed Scrubs as the second most realistic medical show ever, though there is much debate on this subject. Other same genre series may have focused more on medicine and science, but Scrubs expertly captured the hierarchical nature of the medical field and the solidarity between interns who are tirelessly working their way up the ladder. In fact, Scrubs aren't just uniforms. A scrub is a term used to describe a low-ranking hospital employee. Scrub is also a term used to describe a guy that's hanging out the passenger side of his best friend's ride. You know the rest. And I know the rap. Saint Elsewhere. Increase the body fluids and expand the circulation. Come on, fracture pelvis. CBP tray, admission lab, type and cross. IV, lactate ringers and plasminate. Mine stabilized, not supposed to burn you. Need a hand? Yeah, this guy's in big trouble. Saint Elsewhere originally aired on NBC October 26 of 1982 and ran for a total of six seasons and 137 episodes. It was created by Joshua Brand and John Falsey and starred Ed Flanders, William Daniels, Bonnie Bartlett, Doris Roberts, Howie Mandel and a young Denzel Washington in his first major role. The show was set in Boston's South End neighbourhood at the fictitious St. Eligius Hospital. Fun little fact, in the medical field, St. Elsewhere is a slang name given to a less prestigious hospital, the kind of place that doesn't possess state-of-the-art equipment and will pretty much accept any patient. This doesn't necessarily seem like a bad thing, but in the pilot episode, Episode, Dr. Mark Craig has the unfortunate task of informing his co-workers that the Boston media has dubbed St. Elgis a Saint Elsewhere. <gasps> Clutch my pearls. It's taken as a serious insult and a myriad of drama unfolds throughout the season. I think they've found a way to liquefy cardboard. So how'd you end up here in Boston? Frankly, I got bored. With North Carolina? Success. The derogatory nickname didn't seem to stop the show itself from reaching universal acclaim, as St. Elsewhere garnered 106 award nominations, winning 24. This included taking home 13 out of 62 Emmy nominations. In light of Hulu recently adding St. Elsewhere to its streaming library, Rolling Stone published an article entitled Why You Should Revisit TV's Groundbreaking Medical Drama, and further called it a binge-worthy watch that reveals a show far ahead of its time. The Washington Post poignantly wrote that the series offers an hour of involving human drama and entrancing human comedy, all of it emphatically of its time, yet keyed to the themes that are universal and primal, striving, surviving, and intensive caring. Well said. House. Almost forgot, I need to give a 16-year-old magic mushrooms to treat a cluster headache. Is that cool? Yeah, no problem. I was being sarcastic. Wouldn't look that way in the court transcript. Originally airing on Fox, House follows titular character Dr. Gregory House, a cynical medical genius with an unorthodox approach to healing and a pretty serious drug dependency. The show premiered on November 16, 2004 and ran for eight seasons and 177 episodes. It stars Hugh Laurie, Lisa Elderstein, Omar Epps, Jennifer Morrison, Amber Tamlin, Carl Penn and Olivia Wilde. Dr. House was an effective protagonist, deeply flawed and constantly at odds with his colleagues over diagnostics and procedures. His insights and epiphanies were controversial, yet brilliant, and his misanthropic manner made him a perfect anti-hero. I told you it would work. Work on the wrong patient. We could spend all day arguing right or wrong. Give me the hundred bucks. We didn't bet. We could spend all day arguing whether we bet or not. Give me the hundred bucks. The Washington Post called Dr. House the most electrifying character to hit television in years. And in 2010, Entertainment Weekly named him one of the 100 greatest characters of the last 20 years. Furthermore, for his portrayal, Hugh Laurie took home two Golden Globes, two Screen Actors Guild Awards, two Satellite Awards for Best Actor in a Television Series Drama. Oh, and the six Emmy nominations weren't too shabby either. 
By the way, who didn't realise that Hugh Laurie is actually not American? The same article from TV Insider placed House at the very top of its list of the most medically accurate TV shows ever, which is a little disconcerting, considering the main character and diagnostician in the show was inspired by Sherlock Holmes, hates people, and is constantly high. But that's why it's called television. House's ratings peaked in season three, where it was averaging 19.4 million viewers per episode and rivaling American Idol as Fox's most watched show. During the 2008 season, the show was distributed in 66 countries, reaching an audience of 81.8 million, the most watched television show on the planet. General Hospital. Well, it's an elective surgery, right? That means that he doesn't actually need it. Just because it's an elective surgery doesn't mean it's frivolous. With this surgery will give Wiley a better quality of life. How could you possibly object to that? Remember when I was bragging about Grey's Anatomy's 18 season, 387 episode run, calling it a marathon and such? Well, if that's a marathon, then General Hospital's reign is nothing short of an odyssey. Created by husband and wife screenwriting team Frank and Doris Hursley, General Hospital premiered on ABC April 1st in 1963. And it's still running. No, it's not an April Fool's prank, and neither are more than 14,000 episodes that have aired to date. Yes, it's a soap opera, so it isn't necessarily expected to uphold a high level of excellence, but it's still impressive enough to be listed in the Guinness World Records as the longest running American soap opera in production. The same old story, isn't it? Yes, it is. Holly, you are a liar. You're holding a grudge against me. In your eyes, I can do nothing right. You'll never trust me. How can I trust you? How? I don't even know what's real with you! Since the series is so legendary, we've decided to go through each and every one of those 14,000 episodes and give the highlights, starting from the beginning. Here we go. Episode 1, April 1st, 1963. Angie is in an accident, her face gets damaged, she's upset. <laughs> Just kidding, there is absolutely no time for that. <laughs> Much like there isn't enough time to list all of the show's actors and accomplishments. But to name a few, Anthony Geary, Laura Wright, Leslie Charlson, Nancy Lee Gran, Jeannie Francis and Fanola Hughes were all actors across the seasons. And there's a seriously long list of notable guest stars that include The Mark Hamill, Elizabeth Taylor, John Stamos, Amber Tamblyn, Ricky Martin, Demi Moore and Katie Couric. General Hospital has been named by Time magazine as one of the 100 best TV shows of all time and holds the record for the most daytime Emmy Awards with 14 wins. In addition, it has spawned several spin-offs and specials. Just the legacy keeps growing. Nip Tuck. Well, sweetheart, you're never gonna look like Angelina and you're never gonna sleep with Brad. That's just the way it is. Life sucks for you. You don't think I should try plastic surgery? You'll need multiple surgeries and none of them are cheap. I realize that. I want to do whatever it takes to be beautiful. Nip Tuck was created by prominent television producer Ryan Murphy, whose successes include Glee, American Crime Story, The Politician, Ratched, Pose and American Horror Story. Basically the guy knows what he's doing and it's apparent with Nip Tuck. The series aired on FX July 22nd, 2003 and had a six season, 100 episode run. Set in Miami and eventually shifting to LA, because duh, Nip Tuck centers around a controversial plastic surgery center called McNamara Troy, run by doctors Sean McNamara and Christian Troy. The episodes usually feature graphic depictions of a patient undergoing plastic surgery, hence the name, and follow the drama surrounding that surgery, which is why each episode is named after a particular patient. I feel sorry for you, Christian, I do, but when you look at all the emotional scars you've left on other women over the years, I'm surprised that this didn't happen to you sooner. What sets Nip Tuck apart from most of the other selections on this list is that it uses serial storytelling instead of episodic, meaning that plots aren't self-contained within a single episode and can unfold over the course of entire seasons. Nip Tuck received mostly positive reviews, with Vulture calling it the ultimate Ryan Murphy show and further writing that it's a critique of society's drive for perfection wrapped in an exterior that's reference heavy, oddity obsessed and superbly soundtracked. The series also earned 45 award nominations, which included an Emmy win for Outstanding Makeup for a series and a Golden Globe win for Best Television Series Drama. Nurse Jackie. I'm not squeezing my ass into that piece of chair. Ma'am, you need to sit. Well then you need to 
find me a size appropriate chair, okay? If you want me to shoot you full of vitamins, do not give me that patient. Zoe? On it, so on it, like a rat on a Cheeto. Up next is Nurse Jackie, starring Edie Falco as Jackie Payton, a nurse working in the emergency department at All Saints Hospital in New York City. Originally airing on Showtime, it ran for 80 episodes and seven seasons. The show's June 8, 2009 premiere was the most successful ever for the network, with over one million viewers tuning in. Not gonna lie, I would watch anything that stars Edie Falco. Anyone who's ever watched The Sopranos will know that she is a force to be reckoned with. And anyone who hasn't watched The Sopranos, get out of here! Nurse Jackie touches on themes of identity and examines what it means to love and rely on someone despite their flaws. Do not freak out! Grace is fine! Okay. She's safe! Okay. She is also in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania? At a service area off I-95 exit 44. What the hell is she doing there? I don't know. Jackie is a caring nurse, often overexerting herself at work, and still finds the energy to be a wife, a mother, and a friend. On the surface, she's tough as nails, but she hides her struggles with drug addiction and makes terrible decisions along the way. Questionable behavior aside, you find yourself rooting for her, no matter what. And that's partially due to the superb character writing, but very much due to Falco's emotionally charged performance. The Guardian wrote that it's bleak as a comedy and silly as a drama, and that it's got a fairly despicable female lead. All of which, of course, makes for fantastically entertaining TV. In 2010, Falco won the Emmy for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy Series and was nominated for the same award every year following until the show ended in 2015. The Nick. Very well. Take the knife. Now we have a show. We won't be needing this. We tried copper in Paris and it failed. An alloy with silver is preferable for proper conductivity and corrosion. Like you were gonna let us use the wrong wire? I never would have let you get that far without me. Making our list just in the nick of time is, I gave it away, didn't I? The Nick. Directed by Steven Soderbergh and starring Clive Owen, Andre Holland, Juliette Rylance, Eve Hewson, and Jeremy Bob. The show aired on Cinemax for just two seasons, which is by far the shortest run for a series on this list, yet it's still one of the top rated. The Nick is set in the year 1900 and tells the story of Dr. John Thackeray, the new head surgeon at the Knickerbocker Hospital in New York City. Once again, Dr. Thackeray struggles with drug addiction, this time juggling cocaine and opium to help fuel his ambitious nature. Haven't any of these hospital employees heard the expression, don't get high in your own supply? I want you to introduce me to your Chinaman. Oh, the one they brought in here after you saved his life. I need you to call in the favor he owes you. Why? For what? I want him to kill Bunky Collier for me. Anyway, the characters are loosely based on real-life surgeons and medical workers from the early 20th century, and the show tackles issues of racism, class divide, and gender inequality. Critics praised the show's thematic depth, acting, writing, and Soderbergh's sharp directing, and many commented on Cliff Martinez's score and how integral it is to the overall tone of the show. RogerEbert.com wrote that there's an undercurrent of tragedy in nearly every scene, and yet the show never becomes overly depressing. And The Hollywood Reporter stated that the show is more than just a visual tour de force. The writing stands out and the characters evolve, while the acting remains top-notch. Despite positive reviews and ratings, Cinemax officially cancelled The Nick in 2017, citing a change in the network's direction and branding that wouldn't totally align with the show. However, rumours have been circulating about a potential season three, but there's no official word on that just yet. Scalpels crossed. And there you have it, our list of the greatest TV medical dramas of all time. As always, there just isn't enough time to include every title that fits the bill, so if we missed a certain show that you happen to fancy, don't fret, there are plenty more episodes of RT Essentials coming your way. We'll get there eventually. I'm Maud Garrett and thanks for tuning in. And remember, life is but a McDream. <laughs>